What's up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes back again, and today we're talking about the TFB8 Cloud Beast. So stay tuned. That is right, YouTube. Today we're talking about the TFB8 Cloud Beast, and like its name suggests, this thing is a beast. This is definitely a high wattage tank, easily capable of reaching 180 watts plus without a burnt or a dry hit. I love that about it. But my personal comfort zone and where I vape this on on a regular basis is 132 watts. I'm in love with this thing. Honestly, I think it's a great little tank. It's got everything I've wanted for it. It's probably, in my opinion, the best high wattage tank on the market. If you're like me, you like building RDAs that go a little bit higher wattage, you know, that 120 to 150 range. This is a comparable tank to any of those RDAs or any of those builds that you guys may be doing for the purposes of high wattage. Now I will say this before we get into the actual down and dirty section, I'm going to be doing the pros and cons while we're in the down and dirty section so you guys can see firsthand what my issues are with this tank and what makes this tank so great. Now it's again, it's not without its flaws. I, don't, I want to say that right now. It's not without its flaws. It has one big flaw that I'm really pissed off at, but we'll get to that a little bit later in the down and dirty section. In the meantime, what I do want to say is this tank was sent to me by GearBest for the purposes of this review. So in case that's an issue with anyone, in case you think I'm being biased, I'm, I promise you I'm not, but if you think so anyways, I completely understand where you're coming from. I've seen it all before in the comment section. Anytime a reviewer sends something for review, you guys kind of be a little bit skeptical on it. I promise you a fair review on this. And if you guys have any concerns that you've had that I haven't brought up in this video, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Now, moving on from there, I also have a link in the description to this tank on GearBest site. I believe it's an affiliate link. I could be wrong. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but I think it is. So just be aware of that. If you want to go to GearBest and get it separately from that link, you can. I don't, you know, I'm not sitting here trying to force people or trying to trick people into clicking on links that may or may not end up sending me a little bit of referral money. Um, but just want to put it out there just in case that's an issue for anyone. It might be an affiliate link. So just, you know, be aware of that. Um, now moving on from there, let's talk about the actual vapor production and how it tastes at 132 watts which is like i said my personal experience on where i like to vape this thing now it's kind of ironic it's called the v8 and right now i'm using the v8 t8 coil in here and i want i want you guys to hear this okay so let's just focus on the sound here and why it's ironic here okay take a hit off this good vape production great flavor Nice warm vape, I love it. Now what makes it ironic is the fact that it says it's a V8, but it sounds like my Ford Focus four cylinder trying to pass a car on the highway. So, you know, I mean, is, eh, I, I don't know. Anyways guys, but apart from that, um, honestly, really enjoying this tank, few flaws, but before we get into that, what do you say we get down and dirty with this tank and check it out? All right guys, we are down and dirty with the Cloud Beast TFB8 by Smoke or Smock, depending on your pronunciation. First thing I want to address is this little mark on my thumb, because I know it's going to be brought up a million times in the comments section, uh, which if you do, it's understandable. This was actually from my refrigerator. I went to reach in for something, cut myself on the uh, shelfing there, and unfortunately um, have a little bit of a mark there. So if it's too distracting, I apologize. If you guys want me to keep wearing gloves, I will. Just let me know in the comments section what you think. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at the Cloud Beast by Smoke. All right, we're gonna take it out of the box. Here's packaging, by the way. Here are the three coils that's included. You have the RBA section, the Q4, and the T8. Also on the box, you have your little QR codes. If you guys wanna scan those, you guys can pause it right now and scan it. And uh, on the back, you have all your instructions, what it includes, and pretty much all that good stuff. Again, if you guys wanna pause that right there, I will leave it there. Also some legal disclaimers, some warnings, all that good stuff. Again, pause it if you'd like to. Uh, that's pretty much the box itself. And let's move on to the contents. Nice little black smoke box or smock box. I'm gonna call it smoke because that's what I think it's pronounced, but you guys can ridicule me in the comments below if you wish. All right, first up you have the tank itself. We'll get to that later on. We're gonna put that aside and we'll get to the contents of the actual packaging. All right, so installed in this, by the way, is the V8 or the T8. You also have your user manual. Uh, sorry, going back to the installation. Uh, so already pre-installed is this, is this V8 coil. Um, so that's the one that comes installed with it. And then down below you have your spare coils and some other cool stuff. All right, you have your user authentication. Again, if you guys want to scan that, you're more than welcome to. But I'll just throw that off to the side. You have some spare cotton here. This is for your RBA section. 
put that off to the side. A whole bunch of little uh, kind of glass protectors, these little vape fans. And then you also have a whole bunch of seals and everything in here in case they break on the tank. All right, you also have some uh, seasoning here. Uh, by the way, this is not seasoning. Please do not eat this. And you have your little Allen key down here, if you guys can see that. You have your spare glass, which I love that it comes with spare glass. Big plus in my books. And it is not chipped. I think if you remember the TFE4 video I had, both the glass pieces were slightly chipped. Not to the point where it affected the overall tank or anything like that, but just enough to be a little bit of an OCD type thing. Um, anyways, moving on from here, this is the T, uh, there were the T4 coil, I think it's called, the Q4 coil. And again, I have used this before. This is the new one. Uh, I just wanted to keep it clean for you guys in the unboxing section. And uh, it's, it's all right. I mean, it's a good coil, but personally, I prefer the V8 coil just over my personal preference. Um, so you get that as well. Let me rotate this box a little bit so you guys can see it. And lastly, you have the RBA section, which is massive. I mean, just absolutely massive. Here we go in here. It does come with two coils pre-installed. You guys can see that right here. You got like some Clapton's pre-installed here. Really nice pre-installed wire for once. A lot of these uh, RBA sections come with these really cheap wires. This one did not cheap out. So I really appreciate that from Smoke's perspective. Um, and again, you have your airflow down here. Just kind of coming in and as I drop it. Oh, you guys see my hairy hands again. Uh oh, there's some more mean comments. Uh, anyways, and it also has the Velocity Style deck as well, which I really like. It's as, a, as an added bonus. So that's pretty much the RBA section. Uh, overall thoughts on the RBA section, it's good. One of the better ones I've seen in a tank kit. But from my personal experience, honestly, if you're buying a tank that's high wattage, I don't really worry about the RBA section too much. And uh, honestly, it's just one of those things where um, if you're buying a high wattage tank, it's mainly for convenience. That's, that's my personal take on it anyways. I want a tank for convenience. I don't want to have to drip anymore. I don't want to have to worry about building anymore. It's purely for convenience. And that's why I feel like this piece, as glad as I am it came with it, I personally don't really see myself using it very much other than for testing, which I've already done. So uh, it won't be used again from there on out. In fact, this one actually hasn't been used. I used someone else's to test on, uh, both the pre-install coil and building it on and building on it. Both of them are good. The grub nuts didn't actually... Um, they didn't wear out or anything. They didn't strip themselves. So that was a good plus. And uh, other than that, I think I've talked enough about the RBA section for that. So I'll move all this stuff over and let's look at the tank itself. All right, overall tank. This is where I have my airflow set, by the way. It's less than half open. If you guys can see down there, it's not open very much. It provides much denser vape, which I love. Um, and if it's too wide open, I find it gets a little bit more airy and kind of, um, it, it's not dense enough for me to be honest. So I like to keep it closed off a little bit more, right around there. And uh, that's pretty much it. The drip tip comes with, it is a proprietary drip tip. Uh, you will not be able to fit your own drip tip in there. It's a little bit too big for that. I think I've heard things that the Griffin 25 drip tip fits in this, but I don't know for sure. Uh, I believe they're pretty much the same drip tip anyway, so I don't imagine why you'd want to switch it out. But if you did have a preference in the Griffin 25, I think it fits in here. Um, I will confirm in the comment section if you guys can confirm, or I'll confirm in the description as well. Uh, moving on, you have a 510 pin. Obviously, it does protrude a little bit more than the TFE4, but I still do not recommend using these on hybrid-style mech mods. Please, guys, do not use that. Um, anyways, moving on from there, you have your O-rings in here. Just for the seals, you have a coil in there. I'm not going to take this thing apart just because there's really no point. Um, it's a tank, guys. It's made of glass, your, your bottom piece, and your top cap kind of thing. There's not much else to it. Um, now, let's get on to the one, or the one con I have that I really, really dislike about this tank. And that's the fill hole. As with the TFE4, this fill hole is absolutely garbage. I use 140 mil bottles because I vape a lot and because I vape high wattage, which means I'm only using these 140 mil bottles and the top just does not want to go into that little slot there. And when I try and get it in, I'll show you guys what happens. It's going to be a little bit messy, so I apologize, especially since I'm doing this on camera. Put it in. I push it tight to here and I try and fill it and it'll fill sometimes. It's filling right now. But on occasion, I'll get this little air bubble in it. And oh, there it is. No, nope, didn't do it. Anyways, usually it looks like this. We have this big glob on top. You have an air bubble right there. Um, I actually managed to fill it a lot more than I thought I was going to. That's probably the best fill I've had. And of course, I have to be on camera. But uh, usually, you can't fill this thing with one of these 140 mil balls without it going everywhere. It's a big pain in the ass. Um, and just one of those things that I just wish they would have changed on this particular model. 
Um, it, it's just on, <laughs> and like I said, again, on camera, of course, it works first try, um, but usually it, it's really messy. And I've actually had to switch to using a 30 mil bottle. So I transferred my liquid from the 140 to the 30 mil, just so I have this uh, kind of needle point, not needle point, but little smaller um, fill spout for the juice. And unicorn bottles would work for that as well if you wanted to. Like I said, that's the biggest con I have. And uh, I wish I could have showed you on camera, but unfortunately it didn't actually work, um, as it usually doesn't. Now, uh, moving on from there, again, the overall tank appearance, everything visually looks good. Um, the pin is good, but it has this little protruding edge right down there, which can sometimes interfere with the, uh, the mod you're putting it on. And you can see my hands are already filled with juice. So it actually did work, I guess, more than I thought it was. Um, but anyways, so there it is right there. Um, we're seeing some leaking right now. It looks to be from the bottom, probably because uh, when I had that little bit of extra juice left on that seal up there, it pushed it into the actual uh, chimney of it and then came down to the air holes, which happens sometimes as well. Uh, usually it doesn't leak too badly, just if you overfill it or if you fill it in the wrong hole or if it goes in the wrong hole by accident, it will happen um, from time to time. So just be aware of that. Other than that, I think that's pretty much what I want to show off in here. Again, the tank overall, vapor production wise, airflow is incredible. Um, like I said before, I keep it down to there and that is plenty of airflow for me to still cool it down. Uh, wide open, honestly, I don't see a lot of people using it wide open unless you like that really wispy type vape. But for me, it's just one of those things. You can see here, I already have juice spots everywhere and it's leaking out again from that bottom part. And finally, the last thing I wanna talk about is the coils themselves. These are the replacement coils. These are the V8 T8 replacement coils here. This pack retails for around $20 Canadian, give or take a buck or two kind of thing, which when I saw the pricing on it, I was super surprised. And then I opened the package and realized you only get three coils in here. And I've already used one of my spares, as you can see here. One of them has already been used. So I have two left that have not been opened. Here are the, uh, the V8 coils. Again, it's two of these four little coils stacked on top of each other. And basically what I wanna talk about lastly is the coil life. Coil life on these things ranges from about six to 10 days. It does vary quite a bit from coil to coil I've found. And that's starting out at about 70 watts to break it in all the way up to about 120 to 130 on the first day over about a six hour time frame. So I do spend a lot of time trying to break it in. The first few vapes are gonna be absolutely shit. The flavor is garbage. The vapor production just feels off. Um, but again, it's part of breaking in the coil and that's just, I guess that's what you have to do to try and extend the coil life. Um, other than that, like I said, these coils retail for around $20, give or take Canadian. So US, you know, kind of do the math, I would say about 15 bucks for a pack of three. It's not terrible, but I would have liked to have seen a pack of five available um, just so I don't have to keep going out every two or three weeks to buy coils. Although, mind you, I go out to buy juice every week anyways, so it's not really a big inconvenience for me. But for some of you guys who have to order this stuff online, it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass knowing you only get three of them. So you may have to do online orders every couple weeks or just stock up originally or initially. Um, so that's pretty much the coils there. Again, decent life out of them. They're not the best coils I've had for lifespan, but they're definitely up there for a high wattage tank. And especially for vaping at 132 watts, you can't really complain too much. Um, now, apart from that, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in the down and dirty section. What do you say we go back up top, talk about my overall recommendation on this tank, how it performs and whether or not I recommend it. All right, guys, we are back up top with the TFE-8. A few quick things I want to answer because some of you guys may have questions about this. If you have a TFE-4, is it worth the upgrade? If you have a ZPAL Coral Tank, is it worth the upgrade? And honestly, I think it is. This is probably by far my favorite high wattage tank as far as coil life goes, as far as flavor goes, as far as the warmth of the vapor goes. Everything about this is exactly what I look for in a vape. And it's something I thought I was going to try and find through you know numerous reviews I've done to try and find something that actually competes with an RDA and this does I really feel it does so if you're an RDA vapor and you're tired of having to drip and drive hopefully you don't do that by the way but if you do and you're looking for an alternative I think this is the best alternative and the closest alternative to dripping in an RDA in the form of a tank so that's just my personal opinion on it I love this thing like I said before uh, the con of course being the the fill hole it sucks um, seriously smoke or smock get off your ass, fix that fill hole, because it is absolutely garbage. I did not buy a tank, a tank like this, which actually I didn't buy it, again, it was sent to me for review, but I would not buy a tank like this, where it's literally meant to go through juice like there's no tomorrow. Usually I'd fill it with a 140 mil, and I can't even do that, because it just, it goes everywhere. It, the hole is not big enough 
to fill with a 140 mil. That's something that should have been taken into consideration with a high water tank like this that drinks juice like it does. So just a bit of a words of words of advice from me. Uh, I really think you got to fix that that fill hole. It's honestly garbage. Um, that's as I know it sounds rough, but that's honestly the best way I can put it. Uh, that's that's a PG version of where I want to say of what I want to say. But anyways, apart from that fill hole, again, if you have some spare bottles laying around, if you have you know unicorn bottles or anything like that, it can be fixed. It just it's a pain in the ass having to transfer a 140 ml bottle to a unicorn or to even a 30 ml bottle just for the purposes of filling this tank. It makes no sense to me personally. But if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. And like I said, everything about this tank, other than that, is honestly bang on what I've been looking for in a high wattage tank. Uh, so overall recommendations, do I recommend this to anyone looking for a high wattage tank? Absolutely. Do I recommend this to anyone who's used the TFT4, the Crown 2, the Raphael tank, the ZPAL Coral tank, all those higher wattage tanks? Yes, I think this is a perfect upgrade. I think it's worth the money in my opinion. And honestly, this little kit right here is perfect. You get the two coils. I personally like the V8 better. The T, uh, the V4, or the V8 Q4, whatever it's called, um, decent coil, but I prefer the V8 to be honest with you. Um, and other than that, like I said, I definitely recommend this thing. If you guys want to check it out, like I said, I do have a link down below to GearBest, and uh, it might be an affiliate link. I think it might be. I don't know, but uh, make sure to check it out in the description. And other than that, um, let me guys know what your experience was if you have this tank, and if I missed anything as far as cons go. Uh, for this tank as well. So thanks everybody for watching and until next time, happy vaping.